Good afternoon. My name is Jane Anton. I'm co-lead of RPIW number 45. And in my other life, I'm the senior lieutenant here at PDF. We'll be reporting to a half time of 20 minutes. And here's our wonderful team and Sam. We called ourselves Sam's Club, but he refused to put it on. <laughs> so we are Sam's Club. Um, the lady at the beginning of our, I uh, was mentioned, she's our, our uh, patient participant. And unfortunately, she did become ill during the process and was able, unable to complete it with us, but she did have some value in the first day. This RPIW is to improve the resident experience, eliminate defects in information flow for the long-term care movement process from the day that you accept the bed until the end of the first day. The current situation is really very cumbersome and complicated process with many variations in multiple forms. And it affects the emotional aspect of the client and family, and that's a significant piece of the resident and family's experience. There's a lack of role clarity among providers, leading to confusions for providers and family, increasing stress and frustration throughout the process. <coughs> Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Shana Gadassin. Uh, I'm one of the colleagues for RPIW45. I want to firstly thank PAPHR uh, for giving me the opportunity to come all the way from Sunrise and be part of this RPIW. Uh, I'm going to focus on the three targets that we established. Um, two things that we identified during this RPIW was to do with um, the information itself and when it was presented. So that those were the areas we actually focused on. So uh, I'm not going to go through everything. I'm just going to focus on a few things that we identified. So the actual package itself that is given, uh, handed out to a family, uh, initially consisted of, consisted of 78 pages. So we, our target was to bring it down to uh, 40 pages. Uh, then the package itself, um, where it's been handed out uh, in terms of home care, handing that package out, and the distance the package itself travels, we also focused on that. So initially it was. Uh, and the actual the family itself coming to pick up the package, so that was about 11,000 feet, and this kind of an average. And the provided home care assessor actually working on the package, and the travel time associated with that was about 22,000 feet. Um, and then the actual um, one other thing that we identified during this is, uh, which is unique to a uh, herb and uh, the big hospital, is when there's an admission at uh, the herb LTC. Uh, there's a registration that actually happens where the family actually has to go to the meeting and before they actually go to uh, help. So we were, we looked at that and we were hoping to eliminate that process. So there was a 75 feet that was actually part of that itself. And then we also looked at productivity and capacity. Uh, and that was mainly focused on the home care assessor herself and the amount of work that they were doing. So this is our value stream map. Um, basically, we were able to stream it down, like uh, summarize it into three, uh, three value streams: uh, one for Monsanto's, one for Herb, and one for the rest. So if you will really look at the value add, uh, the actual value add is uh, actually the one at the bottom, which is what's done in every rural site, where the admission, uh, sorry, the pre-admission slash admission itself happens on the same day. But the problem with this is that's actually the process that over and overwhelms and frustrates the patient and families the most. So even though there's value add in terms of it's all done in one day, it's actually the most frustrating process to them as well. So if you really look at some of the starbursts that we identified or, or areas that we can improve, it was more to do with there's no real standard in place, uh, there's no real role clarity, there's multiple forms, there's multiple ways the admission is done. So those were kind of the areas that we really wanted to focus on. Um, so this is the pre-Kaizen tag time, and this is the time that's available for the home care assessor slash coordinator to actually create a package. Uh, so some PQA data. Uh, this data is based on April to September of last year. So her facet had 140 admissions in that period. And these admissions are a mix of uh, uh, facility, facility transfer, acute to LTC transfer, and community to LTC transfer. And the next slide actually breaks it down uh, by month. 
and so it actually is for April um, the breakdown of admissions for each side. Our pre-time observations, so pre-Kaizen time observations, so uh, what we looked at in this process was mainly focused around the actual process because this entire process is uh, actually spans from a day to about three or four days, depending on whether you're under a cold burgundy or whether it's actually a normal process itself. But at the same time though, even though there are weights in between each of the process, it was actually a value add to the patient because they were either waiting for the matrix to be created or the PIP or anything uh, or the pharmacy information to actually come back. So in one RPIW, they had actually identified that no admission should happen unless it's an emergency. Uh, for at least a minimum of 48 hours so that it allows uh, that medication information to flow. So we really took, instead of considering them as weights, we actually took that out and we actually focused on the actual cycle of each of the steps. So that's kind of why you don't really see weights in this. It's just the time actually that takes to, to complete each of the processes. So in our uh, standard work combination sheet, if you look at the baseline, in order to actually create an admission from the time they say yes to a bed to the time they actually admitted to the bed is 5 hours and 50 minutes. And the next sheet is more mainly do uh, mainly focus around the person load chart and identifying how much time each process actually takes. So this is the post Kaizen. Uh, what we found out was the actual administration, the uh, the, the piece where you have to actually go to home care and pick up that package was really a waste. So we actually took that piece out. Um, in terms of time, it was a very small reduction, but as we go through, you'll see how much reduction it was in terms of the distance that the family had to travel to come and pick this package up. So this is the pre-observation, and then it actually follows up with uh, the standard work combination sheet. So the baseline still remains the same but the time is now 5 hours and 25 minutes. And so the bar chart is associated to that. Uh, we actually eliminated one step, so you still have three bars uh, for that process. Uh, Joanne Perkins, placement coordinator of PAPHR in Prince Albert, and myself, Judy Painter, long-term care assessor coordinator for West Rural, currently have the role of contacting and meeting with families, uh, collecting and obtaining documents, and completing admission forms for the long-term care process. The process also involves sending out doctor's orders for signatures, looking for receiving doctors, and requesting med recs from the pharmacy. Problems arise because each of the long-term care facilities use different versions of admission forms and home care ends up becoming the middleman uh, because long -term, between long-term care facility, pharmacy, and the doctor. So for example, the pharmacy may not receive uh, orders on time, no receiving doctor in place, no signed doctor's orders, or no financial forms in place. The benefit of changing the role where the long-term care facility, nursing unit manager, director of care or designate, takes over the responsibility of completing the doctor's orders, eliminates us as the middleman, but it also reduces the risk of medication errors and residents not receiving their medication. So the next few slides is the two summary sheets and some pictures. So during the preparation, it was found that there was 12 different admission packages used in this region. So each home had their own. Throughout this process, a single admission binder has been developed for use in all the long-term care facilities, which includes a new welcome letter. Home care will continue to be the single point of entry for long-term care, initial contact with families, sending notifications and providing the financial information. A work standard has been developed along with the multiple skill training schedule. Thank you. Thank you.
Allison Nagy, and I'm a care manager at Mont St. Joseph Home. So here, I have uh, a copy of our sample of our new welcome binder that will be used throughout the region. And in this binder is pre-admission papers that will be signed at the time of pre-admission and some information on long-term care itself and the individual homes. So um, to simplify the long-term care move-in process and overall experience in the future state, we have created standard work processes including preparation for a pre-admission meeting with the resident or with the family or both. The key elements in this process are as follows that once a long-term care bed has been accepted through home care, the director of care, nursing unit manager, or charge nurse will be making contact with the family to set up pre-admission meeting, which is more welcoming than the current stage, which has the family or the resident contacting the home. Um, pre-admission meetings will be encouraged and will occur at least 24 hours prior to the admission of the resident. Once pre-admission and admission dates are set, home care will be contacted so notification can be provided to the physician, pharmacy, and finance of the resident admission date to long-term care. The finance department at home at the Herb Bassett Home will be contacted to inform a pre-admission meeting to ensure availability of this meeting as they are the only site that does not have a finance office. Um, work standard has been created around this process. Long-term care facilities will be obtaining the resident uh, medication orders um, directly from the physician rather than having home care as the middleman. Um, the home will acquire all required documents and then fax to physician. This will provide a better flow of information and mistake-proof the process. Um, resident notification will be provided to all internal home departments to ensure the resident room is ready on the day of arrival. Um, the long-term care designate will ensure that the binder is created at each site prior to pre-admission and all standard documents will be available electronically on the PAPHR website. My name is Kathy Jacobs. I'm part of the nursing team at the Herb Bassett Home, doing or have been doing most of the admissions. I am excited to present this new pre-admission process to you. With this new process, we will alleviate the frustration of repeat questions, of overload of multiple forms for, for the families to sign. The family will be encouraged to attend a pre-admission meeting, and if they can't come, we will do a teleconference. The family will be welcomed at the front door of the hospital, given a brief tour of the home, the units, and the services we offer. They will then be taken to the resigned room, and given the time to assess the room, the opportunity to plan what they can bring to make the room home for their loved one. To finish this process, they will be taken to a quiet room or stay in the room to sign all the forms not pertinent to the clinical assessment that will be done on the day of admission. The family will be informed of an upcoming family meeting in six weeks. The purpose of this meeting is to update the family on how their family member or loved one is doing. A work standard has been created for this. Please note. I'm Charlotte Morris, charge nurse for Birth and Integrated Health Center Long Term Care. You can make the admission process standard across the region by creating standard work for each process of the admission. This is eliminated resident and families from standing in line at the Victoria Hospital when moving into her Bassett Home. Breaking the admission process into three separate parts benefits the resident and their family by decreasing the amount of information they receive all at once, which often causes frustration and a feeling of being overwhelmed. By having the pre-admission done ahead of time, the nurse doing the admission can focus on welcoming the resident and their family to the facility. This also allows assessments that are necessary for providing safe quality care to be completed without the resident feeling rushed, causing frustration and anxiety. Clarifying the provider's roles eliminates repetition of information which makes the admission process flow smoothly. This will improve the resident's experience of moving into long-term care. There is also a work standard which has the EOC or NUN doing a follow-up with the resident or family on how the admission process has gone. Hello, my name is Iris Cannon and I'm a patient family advisor. Both of my parents were are in long-term care. 
During our admission process for my dad, I was the designated responsible person as my dad was 90, somewhat demented, did not speak or understand English very well, and was mostly deaf. He was in acute care for about three months prior to moving into the Herb Bassett home. There was lots of paperwork to do and a lot of forms to fill out before he could move in. On the day we moved him in from his acute care ward to the care home, we again had many forms to be filled in with many of the same questions asked by a number of different staff members. That was very frustrating. My mom came to the Herb Bassett home from the Jubilee Lodge in Canistano. Much of the process done in Canistano at the time of her admission was done again at the Herb Bassett home and again with several different staff members, often asking the same questions. Even though we answered many questions, I felt and found that some of the details were missed, such as receiving a parking pass. I participated in the mock-up pre-admission and admission, and I felt that by having a pre-admission meeting before the actual admission made things a lot simpler and less overwhelming. There was not such a barrage of information. But the administration forms were filled out uh, at that time, and a quick tour of the home was all that was done. On admission day, there was a lot less paperwork to do, and that felt like there was more concentration and focus on the new resident and the family, not on paperwork. This makes for a much better experience for resident, family, and staff. So the improvements we made, um, in terms of the actual uh, walking distance for the family, to come and just pick up a family pack from home care office, um, the pre kaizen was about 26,000 feet, uh, but uh, by eliminating that uh, that particular process, we actually uh, brought it down to zero feet. Um, then, in terms of the package itself, traveling uh, again, it was 11,000 feet. It was just a package that traveled from one point to another. There was really no uh, value to it. Again, we eliminated that process, so it's down to zero feet. And for the home care assistance slash coordinator, the amount of uh, walking that was required, uh, just with the package, you know, preparing the package, then having to uh, come and meet the family, hand over the package, that was about 22,000 uh, feet. Uh, so by eliminating that, we actually brought it down to 80 feet because there's still some administration work that that individual has to continue to perform in this process. So the post uh, targets or the post numbers, uh, the family package, uh, this team actually went through the package and brought it down to 40 pages, so that's a 49% uh, reduction. In terms of walking distance, we actually had 100% improvement on each of those factors. Um, in terms of quality and productivity, we actually uh, were able to uh, give back to the home care system. Uh, in terms of uh, productivity, actually there was a 203% gain, and in terms of capacity, there was 200% uh, gain. So in terms of the newspaper, I want to highlight a uh, few key factors. What we are proposing is uh, to have this process implemented in all Prince Albert sites in the first 30 days of uh, this RPIW and then expand it to one rural site. We are proposing it be done in Shellbrook within the next six days because we actually have a participant from Shellbrook and she's uh, aware of the process. We are also proposing that uh, there should be trained the trainers so that this process can be transferred and when you're actually transferring instead of just giving them a binder and, and work standards, you actually accompany that with an individual so that you know they can actually uh, educate those uh, individuals as to how the process can be done. We have, uh, apart from the audit of actually having it done in 30 days and 60 days, we have actually also incorporated another audit, which is uh, something that was not done, was the actual uh, call to the resident uh, three days after the registration, so that you know you can uh, understand from them what kind of experience it was for their uh, what, what the experience was through that administration process, the pre-admission and the admission itself. So, as part of our RPIW experience, uh, Chenga and I completed a mini 5S in the tub room at the Herb Bassett home. 
We assorted and organized slings. We removed gloves, chairs, unwanted items from the area, creating a cleaner and safer environment. Our starting score was one, and we improved it to 2.5 out of a possible three points. So this is our future state value stream map. As you can see, we have got it down to one uh, main flow, and we reduced our Kaizen verse to two from multiples. That's pretty significant. And our walk workshop summary is we've simplified the process for continuum of care across KAPHR. We've clarified provider roles by creating work standards for long-term care facilities in KAPHR. We've placed admission process in the hands of long-term care facilities, improving communication between facility and client. We've eliminated standing in the admitting line at the Vic Hospital before going to the Herb Bassett home. And we've improved client and family experience, alleviating frustration. And I'd just love to send a big thank you to everybody who helped us and the team for making this a successful RPIW. I actually was tearful this morning when I was saying goodbye to my team. <laughs>